Hey guys, welcome to this new episode. I'm Umbers, and uh, today we're going to be talking about crafting improvements and a big new menu I've designed in Goda because I've improved the crafting system in my game. So I now have a much more complex crafting system with three new recipes for crafting ships because I decided that this week I needed to spend some time working on this feature I really wanted and it's transferring ship, so the player being able to craft new ships and I know, board them to uh, change the behavior of the game, like to have like a more stealthy ship or more aggressive ship or whatever. But for now, I just wanted something really basic, so I took the enemy ships we had right now and I made them drop ship hull when they die, and then I can use these ship hull in my new recipes to craft new ships. And then what I had to do is that I added this fancy new button menu that uh, allows me to pop up a sub menu because the interface was getting cluttered with all the new buttons I had to add. And so now the functions that you use maybe a little bit less often are all grouped inside this sub menu that pops up when you click on the three dots. And uh, inside this sub menu, I've added two new buttons. The first one is the board button that allows you to actually transfer the ship, uh, the control of the ship from one ship to another. And uh, the second one is the transfer button that actually allows you to transfer content of the ships from one ship to another. And uh, this interface was a big job to do this week and it's still not quite finished, uh, but I had to think really hard and long about how I wanted the user experience and I decided that it was absolutely essential to do some drag and drop, but turns out in Godot it's not too hard to do, but I still needed some way to uh, create the interface and, uh, you know, I'm going to show you in a minute how I did that and I think it's quite clever, but uh, if you guys know any better ways I could do lists like that for my inventory, I'd be quite curious to know about your experience in Godot, because I'm still not quite sure this is the best way to do it, but uh, for now that's what I have. So let me show you a little bit how I implemented all of this in the code. So first thing first, to add my new recipes, I first had to create a couple of new JSONs. So the first thing I did is that uh, I created these new items that the enemy ships can drop. So basically some leftover ship hull. After that, I could add these new recipes here. And uh, the recipe has something a little bit peculiar is that the other where the others were using type to have generic items um here i added actually a source so that i can specify a very specific item which in this case is the shuttle body or this probe body then the i could probably have used the uh, produced ship to be like the actual enemy ship that you encounter but i decided to instead make a copy of it because there was a couple of uh, attributes I wanted to tweak just for the player. So for example, the uh, player probe doesn't have an AI component and it also comes with nothing equipped, where the uh, enemy uh, probe, for example, comes with a weapon equipped or something like that. The next thing I did was create this uh, new pop-up button. Um, this new pop-up button is actually a new scene I made that uh, reuses my base button that I use everywhere in my HUD that I grouped them inside this uh, new window that can pop in and out. And uh, to do this, I just created this new root here in the sub scene. And I have this script here that uh, when you click on the pop-up will show or hide the uh, sub buttons. And uh, it's a little bit crude, but it, it basically does the job. And I knew I was going to have to do something like that because I have just so many buttons. I mean, a roguelike usually, by definition, uses nearly all the keys on the keyboard. So I knew I was going to have to find a way to hide some buttons into sub-menus and stuff like that. And in this pop-up menu, as you can see, I added the board and the transfer button. And the board button was actually kind of fun to do because I had to find a way to transfer all the controls and all the stuff from one ship to another. And uh, at first I thought it was going to be something really crazy difficult because a lot of the data is actually stored inside the attributes of the node of the player. 
So if I'm changing ship, I'm basically changing node, and I thought everything's going to be screwed up. But it turns out it worked pretty easily. I mean, there's still a couple of issues I know I'm going to have to uh, fix, but uh, surprisingly, everything went fairly well. Um, the reason for that is probably in big part because of the ECS. Uh, since all my behaviors are kind of managers, I created this one event on transfer player, and uh, this one event is being listened by all the, man the important managers, and they just update whatever reference they're keeping. So, for example, the player's behavior itself always keeps a reference to the player node, so when the signal is emitted, then it just updates this reference. Then in the level loader, for example, I also use this callback to update uh, the level loader's uh, arrays and change the type of the ship so that there's always only one ship that's tagged as the player so that uh, other managers or other behavior actually uh, go and look for this tag from the behavior. And this way they always have the latest reference. And it turns out that most of the attributes that are inside the node needs to stay with the node. So for example, the hull of the ship or the, uh, the, the, the data for the weapons and stuff like that, it's all tied to whatever you have equipped right now on your ship. So when you transfer, your equipment change, and so the information needs to change anyway. So there's very little things I have to transfer from one ship or to another, I mean, data-wise. Um, I know there's a couple. Uh, right now, probably I'm going to have to update the memory, uh, like what the player has seen. This is kind of stored inside the scanner, but uh, probably when you change ship, you still want to remember where you saw all the planets and the enemy ships. So I'm probably going to have to copy that over, but it should be fairly easy since, like I said, I just need to register to the, ev to the event. So it means that the scanner, or for example, the, I have a scanner system, and this scanner system will just need to register to the event and do the copy it needs. And I think most of the issues I might encounter uh, are going to be this easy to solve. And for now, it works kind of well. One thing I had to refactor pretty heavily uh, was the targeting system. So I had this uh, targeting behavior here that I was using for uh, weapon damage. Originally, I had the system plan for only uh, shooting enemy ships. So it was responsible for managing the weapon data, uh, triggering the events of damaging the player and stuff like that. And of course, uh, showing the, uh, the, the targeting grid. But then I realized that I needed this tar targeting grid when I'm boarding a ship, when I'm taking stuff from the ship, I need to be able to select which ship I want to board. And I wanted to have some kind of feedback when, you know, it says, you know, pick a ship you want to transfer content. I wanted to show where the area is. So I kind of transformed this uh, behavior into a more, more generic targeting behavior instead of a like weapon targeting behavior. It still, in my opinion, has a little bit too many callbacks back and forth between the player and the targeting system but it's much more generic now. And basically it should be fairly easy to just uh, add new targeting. If for example, there's a shop, then uh, we might be able to say, okay, talk to a ship and then, okay, the talk command will pop up the uh, targeting system and ask for where, which person you want to talk to, for example. But right now what happens is that uh, when, when the player receives the event, for example, board, See, when the board is pressed, it does the uh, press board callback. And the press board callback will generate the targeting data, which is basically, you know, one square around the player. And then it does the on request targeting overlay. And the targeting system is responsible for spawning the little uh, thing you see around the ship, like the highlight I put around the ship when you need to select something. And then of course it has the classic where it's going to ju just register some kind of callback. Um, one of the thing I did is that I didn't want the targeting system to be responsible for handling the inputs because there's already a whole bunch of things I have to do to manage the inputs. Uh, I don't want the, I have some detection for when the player is dragging something. I want to cancel the input. I don't want the uh, mouse up to be detected if you've been dragging the mouse around and stuff like that. And I didn't want to have to re-implement all that in the targeting. So the way it kind of works right now 
is that I switch the input state to uh, targeting and then the player actually still handle the inputs. But when the state is in one of the targeting states, then it uh, just uh, triggers the on target click and the targeting system will then itself decide whether or not the target was clicked and if it decides that the target was clicked, a valid target was clicked, then it's going to call the callback that you registered in the original uh, event. So for example, now it does the process attack selection, so on the click callback it's going to uh, generate the on deal damage thing on the target that you've selected from the targeting system. And then there's the beast of the transfer item menu. So this one was pretty serious work. I mean, it could, took me like three, four days at least just to get it working somewhat okay. The reason for this is it has, it has a lot of stuff. Uh, the first thing you can see is that I created this new uh, sub scene with all the stuff I needed and there's quite a few nodes in there. And not only that, but these are actually sub-scenes with their own list of stuff. And this is kind of a custom uh, list scene I made for myself because I couldn't really find another way of making more complicated lists. I wanted to just be able to feed my interface with like a, a list of item in the player inventory and it would just create the, uh, create the item. But as opposed to, for example, my crafting, where I just have this uh, list node like that comes with Godot, I wanted something a little bit more complicated with like a button or a checkbox or something I could highlight and then drag and drop or something like that. And I, I couldn't find a good way of doing it, so I kind of re-implemented my own list. And this is how it is. Um, for example, I have this uh, test row here that's hidden. And what happened is that uh, the script in the cargo scroll container will has this uh, content method with a setter and a getter. And what happened is that when you set the content, it iterates through it and then it'll copy the invisible row as many times as necessary. Like this. And the... Um, the, this is what the VBox container and the VBox container would just align everything like in a row and it can even have a scroll bar so it's kind of a perfect container for making custom lists and it also supports the drag, the drag and drop so that now when I'm moving something you can actually see what I'm moving and this is all uh, supported automatically by Godot with uh, these new methods that I discovered. The first one is get drag data, then you have the can drop data and the drop data method. And just with that, oh yeah, and the uh, uh, set drag preview. And with just that, it handles everything for uh, drag and dropping. The thing is, is that I've always had trouble to wrap my head around all the conditions. As soon as you start drag and dropping, and in my case, for example, there's a lot of combination because you can drag from mount to mount, you can drag from cargo to tar cargo, but you can also drag from cargo one to mount two, from cargo two to mount one, from mount one to cargo, and you have to handle all these cases and it took me forever in the scripts to figure out all the possible combination. But in the end, I managed to do it. It's not necessarily the most pretty code I've ever written, but all the tests I've done seems to make to say that it works without any issues. If you want to have more a look at it and see how it's been implemented in detail, I mean, I'm not gonna go in all the detail right now because it would be a bit too long and probably boring. But as usual, just check out my GitHub if you need to, if you want to have some more uh, understanding of how it works. It's still a work in progress, but uh, that's what I've been doing this week and uh, I hope it's of some interest. I'm gonna keep working on my game and I hope you're gonna keep following me. If you want more maybe 
generic advice content or something like I did in my last episode, then uh, let me know in, in the comments and uh, give me some ideas and I'll be happy to uh, make some videos about that. Because right now it's possible that the uh, next video is just going to be about me fixing a bunch of bugs. Uh, but hey, that's also a part of the development process and uh, it might give you some insights about how to do your own software developments. And I did say that debugging skills were a very important part of uh, software engineering. So, okay, thanks guys for watching all the way to the end. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and see you guys in my next episode. Bye.